USA TV presents coverage of Hockey Night in Fitchburg. And tonight, the Red Raiders will finish their run through the Roy Conference as they take on the Crusaders of Grom Dunstable. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Daniel Bolak. Happy to have you along with us here tonight for what should be an exciting matchup between these two teams. Grom Dunstable coming in 2-0. Fitchburg Monty Tech coming in 5-1-1. and The Crusaders coming off a 4-1 win last Saturday against Littleton Bromfield while the Red Raiders picked up their first loss of the season on Monday night, 4-3 to North Middlesex. Gonna throw it down to public address announcer Jim LaPointe with the starting lineups and the anthem. For tonight's Central Mass High School matchup between the Fitchburg Monty Tech Red Raiders and the Groton Dunstable Crusaders. Here are the starters for the Red Raiders. Right wing number 23, Riley LeBlanc. At center, number 12, Max Bolak. Left wing, number 20, Colin Hines. Defense, number 15, Robert Brogan. Defense, number 25, Zach Robillard. And in goal, number 30, Spencer McCrillis. The head coach for the Raiders is Steve Lowney. For the Crusaders, at right wing, number 24, Will Kenny. Center, number 20, Nate Glencross. Left wing, number 14, Jacob Figueroa. Defense, number 22, Andrew Wenzel. Defense, number eight, Mike Hamill. And in goal, number 31, Alex Hilgen Hillenberg. The head coach for the Crusaders is Brendan McCann. At this time, let us honor our nation and the flag with the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. Hockey night in Fitchburg, ready to roll here on FATV. Braun Dunstable, the home team in the home white uniforms with maroon trim and numbers. They'll go left to right in this contest. Fitchburg Monty Tech in the crimson and white. White numbers and trim will go right to left in this contest. As mentioned, Braun Dunstable only two games on the season thus far, but they won them both. A 5-3 win over Oakmont and a 4-1 win over Littleton Bromfield. While Fitchburg Monty Tech just picked up their first loss of the season on Monday night, they'll be looking to bounce back from that. Got their top lines out there, the two best players taking the draw. Nate Glencross for the Crusaders and Max Bolak for the Red Raiders. Crusaders win the draw and we are underway here from Fitchburg. Thrown around to the far side out of the reach of Riley LeBlanc. Played along by Mike Hamill. As Zach Robillard behind the net, throws it along. LeBlanc gets the pass this time, now Bolak. Gains his own blue, passes cross ice for Colin Hines. He's sent into the boards, into that stanchion there by Andrew Wenzel. Red Raiders can't retrieve and it's cleared out to the red line. Robillard will dump in and it's thrown in towards goal where it's gloved down by Alex Hillenberg. He'll throw it down 
And the Crusaders will move it D to D. Pass up to Glenn Cross. He'll skate up the center of the ice. Glenn Cross with some speed. Passes into the right wing corner. Nobody there. Tried the self pass. Red Raiders got on top of that. That pass intercepted there. There's a quick shot that's blocked. Out in front, second chance. That one gobbled up by Spencer McCrillis, the Red Raider netminder. A minute gone in the frame. Spencer McCrillis back in goal for the Red Raiders, unavailable on Monday night. So Devin McGivern made his varsity debut. McGivern ultimately posted a 17 of 21 performance in a 4-3 loss to North Middlesex. McCrillis on the season, 5-0-1, two shutouts. Goals against of an even one and a save percentage of 951 on the season. 116 saves on 122 shots. That shot through traffic, through some bodies. Stopped by McCrillis as well. Hunter Wolfrey took that shot. He scored in the opener against Littleton Bromfield on the last contest, I should say. It's on the near side, Ryan Johnson moves it along for Cooper Hall. Hall up the near side, has his pocket picked by Wolfrey. They clear it out of the zone, splits the two defensemen. Jerry Fang in pursuit for Grand Dunstable, thrown off the boards by Nick McKenzie. And around to the far side for Peter Stevens, Sam Jeremillo for Cooper Hall. That's picked up by the Crusaders. Dylan Cianci trying to do something with it, couldn't do a whole lot with it, and it's sent back down into the Crusader end. About two minutes gone in the first half of play, two 22 and a half minute halves in pod number two. Crusaders with the first two shots of the contest. It's on the left side, a shot goes wide to the right, picked up at the right point by Gron Dunstable, moved on by TJ Senazaro. And a shot thrown in the direction of goal by Cianci, wide to the right, picked up on the left side, shot stopped by McCrillis, and we have a whistle. As the net was a little too far off for the referee to be comfortable to continue play. 2.26 gone in the contest. For the Crusaders, Alex Hillenberg played the last contest against Littleton Bromfield, got the victory in that one, 22 saves on 23 shots. He only played two games from the first 18 last year for Grand Dunstable. That's right off the draw, McCrillis able to make the stop. Another chance in front, and a lot of good chances there. Will Kenny lurking at the top of the paint, but somehow McCrillis able to keep that puck out of the net. He ended up with three saves on that run of play. That's that most dangerous slide for Grand Dunstable. Those three players on there, those three forwards, and Jacob Figueroa, Nate Glencross, and Will Kenny combined for 30 goals last season. So here's Bolak over the blue line, gets the shot off, first shot of the game for the Red Raiders. That's kicked away by Hillenberg. Pass up ice by Kenny, ends up hitting the back of Bolak, ends up getting it back, dumps it in. And the teams will chase. Robillard gets to it first, throws it around for LeBlanc. Tries to pop it off the boards, pressure there. Red Raiders keep control. Here's Colin Hines on the near side. Hines into the zone, tries to push it along for Bolak. Pass not as clear as he'd like. And Cole Bagel will throw it in and around the boards. And there's Bolak in the right wing corner. Two Crusaders on him to try to dispossess. It's Jerry Fang and Carter Emmett on there. Buck migrates to the right half boards. Eventually taken out by the Red Raiders. From the red line, dumped in by Robillard. Springs off the boards. Picked up by the Crusaders. And here is Fang. Sophomore up the near side. Pass up to the far. Shot by Amidon is blocked the right wing corner. The pass goes behind Johnson, taken by Hunter Wolfery. And on the right side, Dylan Cianci, dispossessed by Cooper Hall. 18-20 to go in the first half of play, no score. Shots 5-1 in favor of the Crusaders. As that shot goes off a couple of sticks and bounces harmlessly to the left to goal. Johnson on the near side, on for Cooper Hall. Off from the blue line, that stretch pass to Jeremillo. Tries to get past the defenseman, crosses back to Hall, but just out of his reach. Now Johnson, tried to take it on the right half boards. Hooked out of the zone by Cameron Hardy. He's the highest skating forward for Grand Dunstable, wearing 25. 
We have a whistle here with 17.47 to go in the first, and I believe we'll have our first power play coming here. Lucas Weeby going to the box. Call for the hook. Power play number one on the contest will go to the Crusaders of Grom Dunstable. So the draw will come to the left of Spencer McCrillis. The Red Raiders 13 for 14 on the kill this season. Have yet to give up a goal down one man. So here is Glenn Cross on the right to Kenny. Kenny at the right dot, tries to snipe it, finds iron instead. Second shot in front, goes off a of Robillard. Two minute minor for hooking. Time of that penalty, 5.43, first half. Now Glenn Cross with a shot, that goes off a of body as well. As Figueroa in the left corner. On out in front, that ends up getting caught up on the net. He's trying to center it was Cameron Hardy. I'll bring a stop to play with 17.09 to go in the first half. 1.23 to go on the power play for Grand Dunstable. Already two shots credited. Bring the face off outside of the zone. And the official skating over to the Grand Dunstable bench. Talking with Brendan McCann, the head coach for the Crusaders, sixth season in charge of this side. Talking with McCann and Jacob Figaro about something. What it would be, I have no idea. The draw will come outside the Red Raiders zone, and the Crusaders will win the draw as Glenn Cross will move it along to the far side. Figaro is dump in was actually blocked by his own man there and we have a whistle here I think we had delayed off sides because that blocked entry resulted in one of the Crusaders coming over the line earlier than anticipated it's kind of like how in football you're more likely to get a holding call if improvisation happens or an eligible band downfield I should say because If a run turns into a pass, you've got players going downfield you're not expecting. In this case, the complication there caused a player to enter the zone and stay in it a lot longer than was anticipated because he didn't think the puck was already, he thought the puck was already in there, but it wasn't. And that's why the draw came all the way down. But it takes several seconds off of this power play for Grand Dunstable. They have 45 to work with. If they're having trouble gaining the zone. Jeremillo with a bit of keep away. Throws it out to the near side. Picked up by Hunter Wolfrey. Wolfrey skates to the top of the slot. Still going with some speed to the corner. Wolfrey trying to protect. Broken on him. Jeremillo there as well. Now back at the point for Jack Van Pelt. On the right side. It's Jerry Fang. Fang moving around, looking to center in front. He wanted to find Nagel there. They couldn't get a clean shot away. There's a boomer of a shot that goes wide to the left. Five seconds to go on the power play. It's the top of the slot, Amidon. Moving it along. Stick slamming to indicate the penalty is about to expire. Lucas Weeby out of the box. Red Raiders back to full strength. 15.37 to go in the first half. Still no score. Shots, though, quite lopsided in the early going. Eight to one. And we'll have a stoppage play there. Exactly seven minutes gone in this contest. As the referee will close the door there. It's sort of set up to close by itself. Especially in high school where there are no penalty box attendants. There normally wouldn't be anyway. But especially not during COVID times. But Weeby kept it, pushed it open so far that it just didn't want to automatically close. So it stayed stuck open. We've got that taken care of and we're back to play. McKenzie on the right side for Fitchburg Monitech. 
That pass up is to the wrong player. As it was taken there by Figueroa, that was a 14 to 14 there. That'll be dumped down for what will surely be icing. Now bring the face off back into the Red Raider end. Last year, the starter was Ryan Mosscrop. He was a junior last year. He played 16 of the first 18 games. The last two games uh, never got reported to the TNG, so we don't have stats for those. Mosscrop played the opener against Oakmont, and although the Crusaders were able to hold Oakmont to just 13 shots on target, three were able to find their way past Mosscrop. So for the second game, they went to Hillenburg, and just a sophomore this year, and Hillenburg played well enough to earn another start. 22 for 23 is pretty good to take away. No icing there. As Hamill too close to the puck. Right now shots 8 to 1 in favor of Braun Dunstable. Peter Stevens probably scared McCrullis for a moment the way he was coming in so close to his keeper. Try to get the bad angle center there. Well, was cut down in front. Pass misses the stick of LeBlanc. Ron Dunstable continuing the pressure. Shot with a lot of traffic. Stopped by McCrillis. Another shot. And that one's wide to the right. A little more accurate. Ron Dunstable could very well have had a goal there. All the traffic in front. Not sure how well McCrillis was tracking it. Now a flubbed pass in the slot. And another shot turned away by McCrillis. Already 10 saves for the senior netminder. And another shot, that's punched away with the glove by McCrillis. And another shot blocked in front. This Crusader team is tenacious. Off to a great start controlling the run of play. Out shooting the Red Raiders 11 to one. And yet we remain scoreless. Monty Tech team, the Fitchburg Monty Tech team playing its eighth game of the campaign, while Grand Dunstable is playing just their third. Postponements and the like. Pushing their season back and back more and more. They've only played on Saturdays, too. It's another shot stopped by McCrillis. They played two Saturdays ago against Oakmont, and then they played last Saturday against Littleton Bromfield. They have a whistle there with 12.44 to go in the half. Obviously just going to mean that the rest of their schedule is going to be all the more compressed. So they're only going to have a day of rest before they're back in action on the first against Lemonster. They've got a game against Lemonster to make up along with a game against North Middlesex to make up as well. Pittsburgh Monty Tech will have slightly more of a rest as they'll get to wait until Wednesday for their next game against Lunenburg Air Shirley, a rematch of the season opener. That's going to be an interesting one to watch there. It'll be a 7.30 start from the Civic Center. Those two teams tied first game of the season. Thrown on goal from the neutral zone, and McCrillis paddled down, cuts that one. And Jack Van Pelt puts it over the boards and into the benches for a draw. 12.21 to go in the first half. Grom Dunstable calling the Civic Center home. Not normally their home facility. They usually play at the Groton School. Can't do that this year, though. The Groton School uh, has their ranks closed. So them and Little Tim Bromfield, who normally play their home games there, had to migrate here to Fitchburg and play their home games at the Civic Center. Oakmont had the same issue with Cushing Academy. So they've got to play their home games in Gardner. Passes are going to make it out of the zone as Johnson puts it across to finds the stick of Figueroa instead. Jeremillo tries to keep it in. But still, Grom Dunstable playing strong in the opening stages of this contest. Another shot on, stopped by McCrillis, and he'll corral the rebound and cover. Will Kenny had that shot for the Crusaders. Hard to use colors to describe what these two teams look like because these two teams basically have the same color palettes. Braun Dunstable, white and crimson, and Fetchburg Money Tech, crimson and white.
talked with some of the FATV staff before the game, and the thought is if you weren't familiar with these two teams, you wouldn't know who was who. There's a shot taken off the stick of Figueroa. Ends up ricocheting to the left. Peter Stevens pounds it off the boards. Johnson tries to chip it up, gloved down by Wenzel. The Red Raiders get it out of the zone and dump it in. Have not been able to control much zone time. They haven't really been able to test Alex Hillenberg in this contest. Only one shot on target for the Red Raiders. As Grand and Dunstable have proven themselves to be quite formidable in the first half of this first half. Squirted into the slot, corralled out of the zone by the Red Raiders. Tyler Brassard. Now Jacob Pruno. Pruno will throw it towards goal. And that'll be gloved down by Hillenberg. I think both of the Red Raider shots in this contest have been long range, but that just shows how well Gron Dunstable has played in the early going. As we mentioned, Gron Dunstable, they are a Division III team normally, while Fitchburg Monty Tech a 3A. That'll be icing. And these two teams really do not cross paths that much in this sport. I can tell you over the last three years, there were no meetings between the Red Raiders and the Crusaders. Whereas Fitchburg Monty Tech did play the other two Division Three teams last year that are in this pod in North Middlesex and Lemonster. And they lost both those games last year. They beat Lemonster, but lost to North Middlesex this season. And so these are two teams that are not terribly familiar with each other. In the early going, Gron Dunstable has very much had the run of play. There's some confusion on how to play that. Not great when they've got their top line out there as Nate Glencross takes the shot. Puts it over the net and out of play. Glenn Cross, the leading scorer from last year for this Crusader side. 16 goals, 17 assists for 33 points. Came into this season with 86 points, already has five. Had a hat trick against Littleton Bromfield last week and two assists against Oakmont the week before. So he's nine points away from 100 in his career. So if you get nine points from the last eight games or so, however many Braun Dunstable can get in, you can become the second ever member of their 100-point club. That pass taken by Figueroa gets the shot off and another save by McCrillis. 14 saves already for the senior netminder. <laughs> Trying to show those numbers he's gotten over six games, not at all a fluke or a mirage. He said coming in with a goals against of an even one and a save percentage of 951. But I don't think he's ever been tested quite as much in a period of play this season. Already 14 shots in a little over 12 and a half minutes of hockey. 122 shots faced this season across six games. That averages out to only about 20 a game. So you're closing in on that average. And at this pace, you'll easily get there before the end of the period. Better or for worse, this feels like the Fitchburg Monty Tech game against Gardner, except for the fact that the roles have been reversed. As here's Cooper Hall, backhands through the paint. And on the other side, it'll be taken by Carter Amidon. Ryan Johnson trying to steal it off the stick there. But more pressure from the Crusaders won't let that happen. Around the boards it goes to the right wing corner. Nick McKenzie gets there for the Red Raiders. Cooper Hall trying to provide support. Stevens not seeing where the puck had gone. Goes to that right wing corner for Amidon. Taken at the right point by Senazaro. Now a shot, a lot of traffic there, but McCrill is able to see that one all the way. That's something I'm seeing a lot out of Grom Dunstable, is trying to set up a lot of bodies in front, try to break up those shooting lanes in a sense, trying to make it harder for the keeper to see. Well, Furless is doing a masterful job in tracking the puck in this contest. The red line gained by Bagel and dumped in. 8.15 to go in the first half, and we remain scoreless even as the shots on goal board remains lopsided at 15 to two in favor of the team from Groton and Dunstable. 
And another shot with Brogan providing a partial screen. Colin Flood getting the shot on target, but McCrillis's glove is sharp, and he gloves that one. 7.58 to go in the frame. And another draw won by the Crusaders. So that's thrown up to the top of the paint. But the Red Raiders doing well to tie up the one body in front. Not let him try to test McCrillis there. Dumped back in by the Crusaders. And here's Broussard for the Red Raiders. Taken out of the play by Figueroa, following on as Pruno. He'll just dump it in. The Red Raiders needed fresh legs. Get their top line out there as Figueroa skates it up the left side, puts it across, but there's only bodies in red there. Figueroa regains the zone, tries to find space. This shot goes off the stick of Brogan and into the netting. Yeah, these two teams with very similar color palettes. The suggestion could be made, is it possible a player might make a pass thinking that it's for their teammate, but it's actually for the opposition. It's a quick shot off the draw by Kenny. Doesn't quite make its way through. Maybe it did actually, they'll give the save to McCrillis. Give him 17 on the night. And we've still got seven minutes to go in this first half of play. Glenn Cross trying to push it around the boards. Now try to clear it. Kept in for a moment by Wenzel. Still keeps it in, gets another shot. Rockets high and wide. Slammed around the boards by Robillard. Another shot in front. Ends up hitting Brogan. And it falls right to Jacob Figueroa, who backhands it in. The 18th shot of the game for Grant Dunstable is the first on the board. Jacob Figueroa makes it one to nothing. Shot ended up hitting the body of Brogan, fell in front of him. Brogan had no idea where it had gone. And Figueroa was able to jump right on that and get a quick backhand past McCrillis to get the first goal on the board. The Figueroa's second goal of the season. He had a goal and an assist against Oakmont two weeks ago. Basically, we're in place at the right time. Assisted by number 14, Jacob Figueroa. Time of that goal, 15, 57 in the first. They give the goal to Will Kenny. Could have misread the number quickly enough, but... It'd be Kenny's second goal of the season as well. He scored against Oakmont. So for either of them, it's their second goal. That we can say with certainty. Sears Johnson, two defenders to beat, gets the shot off, but it ends up going wide. Weeby with a touch on for the Red Raiders. And Ron Dunstable skating it up the middle of the ice from Mike Hamill. Hamill in space with time, gets the shot. McCrillis with the stop. It's a senior defenseman in Mike Hamill who was able to use his skills to get through everyone and really get a clean shot on. Just outskated the Red Raider defense, but McCrellis gets his 18th save and a well-earned one at, at that. Draw will come to McCrellis's right. One by the Crusaders, another shot through a lot of traffic, but McCrellis stops that one as well. Now here's Broussard on the left side, muscled into the boards by Wolfery. We stretches it out, pass to the near side, misread by Colin Flood. Doubling back is Dylan Cianci. He'll gain the zone. Up the right side into the circle, put it across, but Pruno gets there for the Red Raiders to receive it. And thrown around the board, see if they'll keep it in. CNC will get to there first and put it back around the boards behind the net. 
Now here's Figueroa in the left circle. Shot on, saved by McCrillis. Get him to 20 saves. I mentioned already, he's got about the number of saves he averages a game already in this contest, and we still have 26 minutes of hockey to play. And then some closer to 27. Another shot and punched away by McCrillis with the blocker. It's been hard to get a read on this Grand Dunstable team just for the fact that they've only played two games this season and against teams that have combined two wins in Oakmont and Littleton Bromfield. Those two wins coming against the same teams. Coming against the same team. That's a funny story in of itself. So we'll have the penalty here with 3.51 to go. It looks like it's going to be penalties against both teams. As Figueroa goes to the box for Grand Dunstable, but Riley LeBlanc is being sent to the other box for Fitchburg Monty Tech. I believe we'll stay five aside here because in high school hockey, they don't drop to four on four if there's matching minors on each side. So LeBlanc and Figueroa will sit for two minutes or more. And we'll stay at full strength. Here's Glenn Cross on the far side, turned around into the zone by Bushnell. Brogan gets there first for the Red Raiders in the left wing corner, along for Ryan Johnson. Johnson skating up the right wing, bodied into the boards, keeps the puck, centers to the slot, but only players Three mostly minutes, clad in white. Riley LeBlanc, two minute minor, Bolden. You see the penalty number 14, Jacob Figueroa. Two-minute minor for Ruffin. Time of the penalties, 18-39, first half. The blank holding. The matching minors keep us at five aside as Glenn Cross wasn't quite able to get a clean one there. Red Raiders trying to transition. Under three to go in the half. They trail one to nothing. And they're still looking for their first quality shot on Alex Hillenberg. As both of their shots on target have been from distance. Meanwhile, the Crusaders have gotten 22 on Spencer McCrillis, a whole game's worth in less than a half. But McCrillis standing tall to keep his side in the game. A lesser goalie very well could have given up five by now. It's another shot off the stick of Bagel. Will go wide to the left of goal. Brogan trying to push it out of the zone. First attempt unsuccessful, gets it on the second. Brogan skates it up, gets a shot on, stopped by Hillenberg. Whistle came a bit early on that, but he had it controlled the whole way. And for the sophomore keeper, just his third save of the contest. Played in two games last year, as far as we know. One game, he conceded seven. The other one, he conceded three. The one he gave up three was a win. He also had an assist in that one, interestingly enough. Don't see a whole lot of assists for goalies, especially not at the high school level, but that came about. And that's going to be and offsides that was completely on accident, but Jack Van Pelt could not stop his momentum as he stopped the puck just below the blue line, just on the wrong side, and pushed it right back into the zone. And if one more second had ticked off the clock, LeBlanc and Figueroa would have been released from the sin bin, because that would have been exactly two minutes. But instead, they'll come out at the next stoppage, so there's the or more part of the equation. Considering how ice hockey works and like, it's almost always very much more. This is skated up ice, the shot and a goal! For Cole Bagel! He's got his first varsity goal! The sophomore forward snipes the 
top left corner and makes it two to nothing. Nagel just skating up the right side with a lot of pace. And he found that space on the blocker side. That's the corner you want to shoot for if you have to pick a corner. So 2-0 to the Crusaders. Bagel had two assists last season. And he's a sophomore. And last time I checked, Ron Dunstable doesn't have eighth graders. So from there, you can infer that's his first collegiate goal, his first varsity goal. Perhaps a collegiate goal could come in many years. A first varsity goal is what it is. With 103 now to go in the first half, Ron Dunstable leads two to nothing. One minute, last year play in the first half. Another interesting thought is... second goal is number 17, Cole Bingo. Assisted by number 10, Jerry Fang. Time to go 21 minutes in the first half. Jerry Fang gets the lone assist. He had two helpers last year. Now, here are the Red Raiders trying to make something happen here from Riley LeBlanc. Superior skating skills from the senior defenseman and Mike Hamill shut that down. Hamill continues to skate it up here. Goes for the wraparound. Red Raiders able to at least put a lot of bodies in the way to prevent it from being that easy. Shot blocked in front. Left side. Hamill with that. And McCrillis with the pad save. That one bounces a lot in front. But ultimately no one able to get a clean one towards McCrillis. He gets a poke check on that. Three seconds to go in the period. Bolak able to nutmeg Hamill, but unfortunately, there's not enough time to make any other moves. And that brings an end to this first period, which Gron Dunstable have got to be smiling like butcher's dogs. They've played that period as perfectly as they could have. That's on goal for this period. Crusaders had 25, and the Raiders had three. 25 to three, the shots on goal in the first half of play. Just downright domination from Grand Dunstable in that first half. Not really a whole lot more you can say. Just they played pretty much every facet of the game better. And for the Red Raiders, they're just having trouble finding their way into the Crusader end. It's hard to really come up with much in terms of articulate analysis because the one positive you can take away from this, though, is they held the Crusaders to two. With how dominant a first half that was, you would have easily expected more than that. But Spencer McCrillis standing on his head to keep his team in it, 23 saves in the first half. But Grand Dunstable leads by a score of two to nothing. On goals from Cole Bagel and what I believe is Jacob Figueroa. We're going to take a break for the intermission. When we come back, we'll have the second half and we'll see how these teams come out for the rest of this contest. Through one half of play, Grand Dunstable 2, Fitchburg Monty Tech nothing. This is Hockey Night in Fitchburg on FATV. Back here at the Wallace Civic Center on the campus of Fitchburg State University. Hockey night in Fitchburg rolling on here between the Crusaders of Grand Dunstable and the Red Raiders of Fitchburg. Monty Tech and through one half of play, 2-0 Grand Dunstable leads. Daniel Bolak here with you along with our fine FATV crew. Robin Como directing, Travis Falk doing technical support in the truck. Matt Murdaka and Nate Glenny are camera operators today. We're all happy to have you along with us today. Whether you're watching from Worcester County, or Middlesex County or beyond. We're happy to have you, whether you're watching on Comcast, Verizon, FATV.org, or on your connected internet device, whether it be your Apple TV, your Roku, your Amazon Fire device. However you've chosen to join us today, whether you're watching us live today 
on this Saturday afternoon or you're watching us on demand sometime later. We thank you for tuning in. Regardless, in the first half of play, it was all Grand Dunstable, as you can see. They lead two to nothing. Shots 25 to three. One of the more lopsided affairs in terms of shots on target we've seen this season. But the only way that period could have gone worse for the Red Raiders is if their goaltender was not up to par today. But Spencer McCrillis very much has been with 23 saves. Alex Hillenberg very lightly tested as he pushes that with the paddle along. And the Crusaders bring it up from Nate Glencross. He gets the shot off, and it's stopped by McCrillis. Ron Dunstable in those home white uniforms with maroon numbering and trim going left to right in this contest. They've got white on the score bar you see there because if we use the color from the shield, uh, it'd be the same color as we've got on the other side for Fitchburg Body Tech in the crimson uniforms with white numbering and trim going right to left. We figured the white color there for Grand Dunstable would make it easier to tell who's who on the ice today. This is what is officially the third road game for Fitchburg Monty Tech this season, and it's actually the first road game in which they've actually conceded goals. As they were able to shut out Gardner in Gardner, and they were able to shut out Lemonster here last week. But now a over a minute gone in the second half as it's pushed up the boards. Settled at the red line by Dylan Cianci. He regains the zone. Not much can be done there, and it's cleared out. D to D, Grand Dunstable will go. Wolfrey and Van Pelt. And up the near side boards, who will be picked up by Zach Robillard. And offside's gonna be called against the Red Raiders there. This Grand Dunstable team last year got off to a horrid start. They went 1-8-1 and one in the first half of the season, but then they really turned it on. They tried to sort of do what Lunenberg Air Shirley did last year, in which they started out slow, but were able to storm back in the second half and make the playoffs. They went 7-2-1 down the stretch, Grand Dunstable did, but it wasn't enough to get into the playoffs. Missed out with a record of 8-10-2. Eight, eight, so here's Cianci trying to create some space. Can't quite get a shot off. Cooper Hall takes him off the puck, but there's another shot. That's gloved by McCrillis off the stick of Hunter Wolfery. So of the five seasons before that Brendan McCann has been running this side, they've been able to make the playoffs three times. So that was just their second miss for five seasons. But they've still done fairly well in the Central Mass playoffs. That's right on the doorstep. Cole Bagel's got his second. And it's three to nothing. See him skating hard through the handshake line. He is so excited. The sophomore forward, two assists last season. He's now exceeded his points total from last year in just his third game. That's his third point. He had an assist against Littleton Bromfield last week, and now he's got two goals today. And Grand Dunstable leads three to nothing. He's taking it there again, number 17, Cole Beagle. Assisted by number 10, Jerry Fang. Number eight, Mike Hamill. Time that goal, 2.06 of the second half. That was Beagle's second goal. up here is Amidon. Amidon stops at the goal line, pushes it across. Dangerous there. McCrill is able to get over and deny Beagle of a hat trick. And Amidon with some strong moves. Tries to keep the Raiders off the puck, and now here's Johnson skating up ice. Red Raiders could have numbers. They're going to have a chance here. The shot stopped by Hillenberg. That's the first real good opportunity the Red Raiders have had all day. Got to start somewhere. This Grand Dunstable team 
playing so well today. Normally a Division Three team, the Red Raiders a 3A. That's one of the main reasons they don't cross paths very much. Brogan's boomer of a shot goes over the crossbar. And smashed off the boards. Jerry Fang trying to pick that up. Fang in the right wing corner, Robillard engaging with him. Centered, but that's broken up by Hall. Now to the left point for Van Pelt. Through traffic. Cut down by Figueroa, and that ends up making its way to McCrillis, who covers that up for a draw. 18.43 to go in the contest. 3-0, the Crusaders in front. Figueroa struck in the first after a shot from Will Kenny was blocked. Figueroa was able to pick up the loose puck in front. They announced that goal the other way around, but I think I've got that one right. And then Bagels had the last two for Grand Dunstable. Around the boards, and Pelt can't keep it in the zone. And Kenny will retrieve back in his own end. Pass broken up there and turned towards the direction of goal. Hillenburg will cover for a draw. There's LeBlanc intercepting and pushing it back towards the sophomore netminder. 18-12 to go in this contest. Shots 4-2 in the early going of this half. A couple other games in the pod. Lunenburg Air Shirley taking on Oakmont and Gardner. That game would have already gone final by now. That was a 1 o'clock start. Lemonster and North Middlesex will be playing each other a little bit later today. That one blockered away by McCrillis. Brogan pushing it out of the zone, picked up by Kenny. Loses an edge as he trips over the red line. And Robillard will retrieve. Can't find LeBlanc. Bolak able to pick his pocket. And now Bolak gets the shot off. And that's fought off by Hillenberg as he sends that into the netting and out of play. It's like whatever chances the Red Raiders can get in this contest, it seems to come just from going on the counter because they've just not been able to sustain any pressure or possession in the Crusader end whatsoever. Makes things so challenging for them today. And the Red Raiders not scheduled to play any more Division Three teams after today. The last three games on their schedule, Lunenburg Air, Shirley, Gardner, and Littleton Bromfield. They're all teams we've seen before. And in Littleton Bromfield's case, a team we've seen twice before. So the Red Raiders able to add a game with a postponement and then able to make up the postponement. So they have 11 on their schedule as opposed to 10. So that shot up high, but McCrill is able to get that. For the Crusaders' 30th shot of the game. 16.58 to go in the half. Was one other game earlier today at the Civic Center, and that game was a girls' hockey game between Lemonster and Algonquin, and the Tomahawks of Algonquin came away handedly with a 6 nothing win. Lemonster's goaltending numbers to the point where they actually had to play a sixth grader in goal. As Lemonster does co-op with many teams, many different schools, a couple of which do have sixth, seventh, and eighth graders available. That Lemonster team has had to improvise with different netminders over the years. There's a couple more chances for Grand Dunstable. That's cleared out of the zone. And they will call the icing. St. Bernard's was also supposed to play Grafton Valley Tech today, but that game got postponed. They're supposed to play them on Thursday. That also got postponed. They're still trying to get those games in. St. Bernard's. 
playing four games against Hopedale to start their season, and uh, they've had more than enough of Hopedale. Don't think they're interested in playing them again anytime soon. On the far side, Amidon. His shot goes off a leg and into the netting and out of play. 16.07 to go in the second half. Three nothing Crusaders in front. Shots in the period are five to three in favor of the team primarily wearing white. Because saying the crimson and white or the red and gray or something like that, those color descriptions just don't work today. Across with another stop there. Just like my old days at Fitchburg State, whenever we played Fisher College. The Falcons versus the Falcons. Have fun with that. Also applies to Albertus Magnus. On the near side, kept in at the blue line by Hunter Wolfery. Jerry Fang. Three Red Raiders on him trying to dispossess. Able to do so, but Wolfrey keeps it in. Puts another shot on, went off a stick in front. McPurl is able to shut that one down. Wraparound chance goes nowhere for the Crusaders. Into the neutral zone it goes, but taken back in by Bagel. He's looking for a hat trick. There's the shot that's stuffed by McPurlis. Took a strange bounce off his pads. Now fresh legs out there for Gron Dunstable and their top line out there. Glenn Cross with the shot. That goes nowhere. Figueroa up to the left point. Pushed along by Hamill. Point-to-point -point passing, Wenzel. Right side, bad angle. Punched away by McCrillis. Goes off a of Robillard and back towards him. And he'll jump on that and cover for a draw with 14.29 to go in the game. Gron Dunstable three. And Fitchburg, Monty Tech, nothing. Mentioned North Middlesex playing Lemonster later today. North Middlesex has had a very unusual start to this season. They opened against Littleton Bromfield. They lost 3-1. to one. That's Littleton Bromfield's only win of the season coming into today. Then they played Fitchburg, Monty Tech on Monday night. Won that game. 4 to 3 coming into today. That's Fitchburg Monty Tech's only loss. There's LeBlanc now for Polak. A shot saved by Hillenburg. And the Crusaders are right on top of that rebound. Strong stretch pass off the boards to Bushnell. Pushes it into the zone. Chance there for Ron Dunstable. Not much coming of that. Here's LeBlanc on the right side for the Red Raiders. Centered across, wants Hines. Goes off his skate. It's under Hillenburg somewhere. But he keeps it out. Another good chance for the Red Raiders. Just looking for a goal to try to get themselves back into it. With 13.41 to go. So the following day, North Middlesex played Lunenburg Air Shirley. Beat them by a goal to nil. That's Lunenburg Air Shirley's only loss of the season coming into today. And then on Thursday, they played Oakmont and lost two to nothing. And that's Oakmont's only win of the season coming into today. Nothing like North Middlesex's schedule to make the transitive property look like complete garbage. It just does not work this season with that team. And Lemonster's the only team in the pod on no wins, so. Lemonster will probably win on that game later tonight. Get them their first win, because that would keep the pattern going. Ended up catching the white there on the wrong side of the blue line, so it turns into a delayed offsides. Red Raiders have to back off and reset. Cooper Hall able to corral that. Hall gets the shot off. Hillenberg with the stop. A stick loss there. Backhand chance stopped by Hillenberg as well. Red Raiders up to seven shots on goal in this period. And a shot blocked in front. Carter Amidon getting in the way. And Amidon battling with Robillard. They go into the boards.
Red Raiders starting to look a lot hungrier. Tried to bank that off the skate of Robillard. Now here's Sam Jaramillo into the zone. Trying to get around two Crusaders, puck behind the net. It'll be skated out by Grom Dunstable. That's going to go wide of the goal, but slows down enough in front of McKenzie that it won't be icing. Now here's Bagel on the right side, and we have a whistle. As Nick McKenzie was decked behind the play, I saw an elbow indicated. 11.46 to go. Hope Nick's all right. Jerry Fain goes into the penalty box. And two minutes go on the board. So the Red Raiders will have their first State power play in the contest. Two minute minor for elbowing. Time of the penalty, 10.44 in the second half. Fang, two minutes elbowing. 10:44. Red Raiders six for 25 on the man advantage this year. Puts Machade under 24 percent. Bolak skating up up ice, moves it around to the left wing corner. Centers for LeBlanc at the point. Gets it back to LeBlanc. It's a shot wide to the left of Hillenburg. And Hamill able to dig that out and send it down the, the length of the ice. 11 to go in the contest. 3 nothing. Crusaders in front. Two from Bagel, one from Figueroa. Spent back down to the Red Raider end. Pass out of the reach of Heinz's stick. Settled down by Jaramillo. And we'll get there on the left side boards, picked by Hall. Red Raiders can't get it towards goal. Max Bolak settles it. Goes cross ice, right side, shot save. Looking for the rebound there was Hall. Couldn't get a stick on it, and it's cleared by the Crusaders. Aprilla settles behind his own net. Pass up the near side. Miscommunication. Nobody in position to receive it. Crusaders able to pull the puck away, and Will Kenny able to dump it down the length. LeBlanc battling with Kenny here on the near side. Here's Bolak. Five seconds to go. Has trouble getting around the one man. And no more chances on this power play as Jerry Fain comes out of the box. The Raiders had a shot on that power play. Not much more than that. That goes through the lakes of Stevens and down the ice where Wyatt Peters picked that one up. His pass intercepted. Two Crusaders waiting at the blue line for it. There's Weeby. Backhand to get out of the zone. Up in front of the Grand Dunstable bench. Now Peters trying to push that into the zone. Gets in there, not for very long. Bolak slamming it around the boards. He comes off of the line change. Weeby trying to retrieve in the right wing corner, battling with Jack Van Pelt. Into the left wing corner for Colin Flood and Bagel on those near half boards. Broussard trying to dig out for the Red Raiders, but Bagel will skate it up. Bagel trying to shoot it through the legs. Pinball's in front of the blue paint. Does not quite make its way to McCrillis. 
31 saves for the senior netminder. This Scrum Dunstable team has been tough to stop. Stevens, D to D to Peters. In the left wing corner. Pass intercepted by Glenn Cross. He gets it back. Nate Glenn Cross trying to center in front. Cut down. And a shot through traffic. Messenazaro ends up being padded away by McCrillis. There's Wolfrey. That gets caught up in the referee's skates. And Peters will have to pick it out from there. Wolfrey gets it back in the neutral zone. And Cooper Hall sticking it down the ice. T.J. Sanazaro throws it around to the near side for Hamill. And Kenny there as well for the Crusaders. Pass up for Figueroa. In the zone on the left side. Left circle shot is blocked. Buck into the slot now. Figueroa with another shot. I think that was blocked as well. Robillard got in the way. Under seven to go in the contest. Looking for Figueroa on the doorstep. Couldn't find his stick. He'll get it back. Looking for Kenny. Hops over his blade. There's Wolfrey, the right wing corner. Kenny, shot, saved by McGrillis. 6.40 to go in the contest. One thing Grand Dunstable did last year to try to build some adversity, play a bunch of teams that are not from the area. They played six teams outside of the traditional Central Mass area last year. Played Acton Boxborough. Lost that game four to one. Played Bishop Fenwick out of Peabody. Lost that one five to two. Those are both Division I teams they're playing up and trying to beat. Didn't come away with the win either time, but they were still fairly competitive in those. They played Maskinomit, one of the best teams in Division II. And, uh, okay, that didn't go well. They lost seven to one. But then they played Plymouth South. That was part of a tournament they were playing. Then they won that game eight to nothing. Masco and Plymouth South, both Division II teams out in Eastern Mass. Then later in the season, they played two Western Mass teams at West Springfield and Minichog, both teams that made the playoffs in Division Three in Western Mass last year. As there's a shot and a goal for Grand Dunstable. Through traffic, and it finds the back of the net to make it four to nothing. Just a shot from the point, and so much today, we've seen Grand Dunstable put a lot of bodies in front to try to obscure the puck from distance. And that time they were able to find it, that puck was able to find its way through the labyrinth of players and out the other side into the back of the net to make it four to nothing. Didn't get a clean look on it myself, so we're looking to see how they announce the goal here. Crusader four goals by number seven, Jack Van Pelt. Assisted by number 18, Colin Flood. And number 11, Dylan Cianci. Time of that goal, 16-32. Second half. So for Jack Van, Van Pelt, Pelt, that's going to be his first varsity goal as well for the junior defenseman. Got his first points against Oakmont in the season opener. Now he's got his first goal. And there's a shot a goal for Michael Hamill. We praised Hamill's skating ability. He's been able to find ways past the Red Raider defense. He had a great chance earlier in this contest, creating an opportunity for himself. McCrillis made the stop there. Couldn't make it on that one. And it's five to nothing. On Hamill's first goal of the season, he had four last year, the senior defenseman. Coming 61 seconds after the fourth. And 
And now another shot there. Again, that's Bagel looking for his hat trick. McCurlis able to punch that away. McCurlis had given up just six goals this season coming into today. But this Grand Dunstable team that has just played so well in this contest have put five on the board. And for the Red Raiders, the bigger question is, can they break up Alex Hillenberg's shutout? With only a little more than four minutes to play. It'll be tough to ask for five, let alone just looking for one to start. The Red Raider defense will have to try to keep this Crusader team off the board. They're looking for more goals than that. Credit to Hamill did that all by himself. I've been really impressed with his skating abilities. That senior defenseman, one of the quad captains on this team with Figueroa, Glenn Cross, and Cameron Hardy. But not every game's gonna come easy to you. Here's Hall. Gets the shot off there after the pressure from Sanazaro. They were able to close off the passing lane, so he had to take the shot. Ends up putting it right into the GD on the front of Alex Hillenberg's jersey. Already had a couple of players with their first varsity goals in this contest. And now Gron Dunstable going to try to give Alex Hillenberg his first varsity shutout. Just thoroughly impressed with how Gron Dunstable played today. The Mammoth squad coming in. McCrillis will push that aside. The thought in my head coming in is they'd have to shut down Nate Glencross. That was going to be a key to the game. And well, they've done that. Glencross hasn't got a point. But it doesn't matter because this Crusader team still able to manufacture five without any goals or assists. The man wearing number 20. Pinballs into the slot backhand. Squirts just wide of the cage. Seeing a couple different numbers out there. Preston Southwick now for Gron Dunstable. Trying to protect that. Here's Bolak. Trying to skate past everyone. Bolak still going. Chased off into the corner. Circles back for some space. Puts it in front. Off the stick of LeBlanc. And then through the paint. Just could not settle the puck down. Would have surely been a goal otherwise. And Grand Dunstable's going on the power play with 1.50 to go. So tantalizingly close to breaking up the shutout. With the puck unkindly hopping over the stick of LeBlanc. And Colin Hines goes to the sin bin with 150 to go in the game. So they'll have the rest of the game to work with on the power play. Barring any shenanigans. Or of course their sixth goal. Red Raiders able to control the draw. And Cooper Hall just spits it out of the zone. Andrew Wenzel battling with Jeremy Miller. It's 22 on 22 there. Far side for Sanzaro. Crusaders trying to bring it up ice. And here's Hardy. Drops off for Glenn Cross. I think Glenn Cross wants a goal or a point or something. And they're going to get one on that. Power play goal for Groton Dunstable. As that just slipped through everybody. And it's six to nothing.
looks like it was Cameron Hardy who probably got the finish on that one. And so Grand Dunstable matching the six that Algonquin was able to put on Lemonster's girls earlier today. Looking like obviously the roughest outcome of the season for the Red Raiders. Just trying to hold on as best they could. But it's all falling apart in the late stages of this half. Assisted by number 20, Nate Glenkross, number 22, Andrew Wenzel. Time of that goal, 21 11 of the second half. That was a power play goal. So that puts Glenn Cross at 92 career points, eight away from 100. I said he was looking for at least a point today, trying to get himself closer. He knows he doesn't have a lot of time to work with this season. Fifteen to go in the game. Here's Colin Flood skating at about pace. Sent to the boards, Howard. Throws it around. And the buzzer is going to sound to bring this game to an end. Groton Dunstable with about as perfect of a game as you can play. Take down the Red Raiders by a score of six to nothing. Outshot the Raiders 15 to 10 in the second half, but they find the back of the net four times, three in the last six minutes. Shots open. Crusaders had 15 for a game total of 40, and the Raiders had 10 for a game total of 13. And your final score here on a Saturday afternoon at the Wallace Civic Center. Brought in Dunstable Crusaders 6 and Fitchburg Red Raiders nothing. The FATV three star selection for this afternoon's game. The number three star with two assists for the Crusaders, number 10, Jerry Fang. The number two star tonight, or this afternoon with two goals. Number 17, Cole Beagle. And your first star for this afternoon's game goes to defenseman number eight, Mike Hammer, with a goal and an assist. So there are the three stars of the game. Michael Hamill with the goal and an assist, the first star. Cole Beagle with the second star with two goals and the two assists for Jerry Fain give him the third star. And some honorable mentions also to Alex Hillenberg for getting his first varsity shutout and Jack Van Pelt for his first varsity goal. But Gron Dunstable played that basically as well as you could have expected, as well as they would have liked. McCrillis holding the fort as best as he could for the Red Raiders in the first half, but in the second half, especially in the last few minutes, they were worn down just enough and Grand Dunstable turned it from what was a relatively close 3 nothing game into this lopsided score that you see here. But credit to Grand Dunstable, like I said, they played the most complete game I've seen any team play this season. And they'll be happy to head back home with that 6 nothing victory. So Grand Dunstable's next game is going to be on February the 1st. They'll be back here at the Civic Center taking on the Blue Devils of Lemonster for 6.30 start. Pittsburgh Monty Tech's next game will be Wednesday night. They'll be taking on the Blue Knights of Lunenburg Air Shirley for 7.30. Puck drop will have that for you here as well on FA TV. Our next broadcasts are going to be on Monday night. A boys basketball from the Grutchfield Fieldhouse as the, as the Red Raiders will be hosting the Wildcats of Gardner. JV game at four, varsity at six. I'll have the call for the latter. You'll join us for that as well. See our crew 
here at FA TV, bringing you the coverage. Robin Como directing, Travis Falk doing technical work, Matt Murdaka and Nate Glenny, our camera operators today. FA TV remote productions underwritten by Workers Credit Union, Rollstone Bank and Trust, UMass Memorial Health Alliance, Clinton Hospital, North End Subaru Research Results, Unitil, Manitman Press, Hub International, Mark Fitchburg State University, and the Sentinel and Enterprise. We thank them for helping make all of our remote productions possible. So that's it here from the Wallace Civic Center. Final score, Groton Dunstable Crusaders 6 and the Fitchburg Money Tech Red Raiders nil. So for everyone here at FATV, I'm Daniel Bolak saying thank you for tuning in. We hope to see you next time. And until then, so long from Fitchburg.